Hello and welcome to this Esri Ireland video. Today we are going to take a look at Instant Apps. Instant Apps is a wonderful tool to share geographic information with a wide range of audiences, but crucially it requires no code to set up. This video will be split into different sections and you can find timestamps for the sections down below. We will begin with an overview of the application and some handy features before making our first app using the basic template. We will keep express mode switched on and see how you can have an app up and running within minutes. The second half of the video, we will take a look at the interactive legend and nearby templates with express mode switched off so we can see what configuration options become available. I hope that by the end of this video, you will have the knowledge to create your own app and be inspired to use it in your workplace. There are two main ways of finding instant apps. The first is to go through the waffle in the top right hand corner when you are signed in to your ArcGIS Online account. You'll find it from the drop down list here. The other option is to start from Map Viewer. This is a map I created for the ArcGIS for Schools How to Create a Web Map video. And to open it in instant apps, I can go to my content toolbar here and click on the Create App button and I select Instant Apps. Instant Apps opens on this welcoming page. To the left, we've got a suggestions box where I can answer just a few short questions and I will be provided with some suggested templates that would work for my needs. In the center, I've got the template gallery. And again, I can find more information about each one by selecting the details view. As mentioned in the introduction of this video, we are going to begin nice and simple with the basic app template. I select choose to open up this template, but I can also check out the preview to see what it will look like. I have provided some basic information such as the title and some tags. I can then create my app. Opening up on the configuration page, I have a preview of what my app will look like here. With express mode switched on, my configuration options are much more simplified and they are laid out in four easy steps. Depending on the template you use, you might have five steps. Instant Apps has included a very handy feature where you can simply search for a setting. I can search for instance, legend. I will be given some options that I can click on and then I can make the decisions that I need to on the legend. There is also a get started section, which will give you some information about all of the tools within Instant Apps. You can also have a look at web ad and analytics, and you can take a look at what your app will look like with different views, such as desktop, portrait, or landscape mode. Now that we've covered a general overview of Instant Apps, let's have a look at how quickly and easily we can get an app up and running within minutes. Step one, we select our map. I can see that my map has been selected, so I can click next. Step two, we provide all more information about our app. So we can include a header and we can edit the text alternative for the map. I'm happy with that. I can choose the fixed pop-up location and I'm going to switch that on and I want it in the bottom left corner. I click next onto step three which allows us to configure the interactivity of the app. Um, I'm going to switch on the layer list. I'm going to keep screenshot disabled. I will allow search and down here is where I choose the search configuration and I'm going to bring the World Geocoding Service, as opposed to the Irish and UK Geocoding Service, to the top. This will allow me to search all over the globe. I go on to step four to select uh, the theme and layout. I'm going to stick with the light mode and I'm not going to select um, a theme, but there's a few options there to choose from. And I can also choose the position of my widgets, but again, I'm going to leave it as is. And now we're ready to publish. 
my app has been successfully published and so now I'm able to share the link on various social media accounts and I can also embed the app within another website. Let's click launch to have a look at what it looks like. Here we are. This is our earthquake um, app. We've got our legend here, which tells us uh, what each symbol means. And uh, for the tsunami data, which is an image service, we can go down to the layers list here and we can expand the tsunami layer and we can go to um, Japan in 2011 and see what kind of energy was coming out of that earthquake. Um, I will search Japan. And here we are. And there is the energy that came out of the earthquake in 2011 that caused a tsunami. And so this map app is now available for anybody to have a look at. So let's move on to the next template. Next up, we're going to be digging a little bit more into the details of how to configure a map with express mode switched off. With express mode switched off, we're going to get a lot more options in the dark panel here on the left. Let's dig into it. As it is quite a similar workflow, you might see some repetition. So of course, first up is to choose your map. I am choosing a map with flood data in Ireland, which has been provided by the OPW and is live on the Living Atlas. With express mode switched off, I can also select a map area. Seeing as this map is focused in Ireland, I only want the user to be able to see Ireland. So I'm going to center our island in the middle of the map. Under the About section, I can change my app title if I would like. I can include an introduction window, a header, and I can edit this header with uh, some code if I would like. And I can fix my pop-up location to a specific place. The interactive legend section is dependent on what template I've chosen and we'll have options related just to this template. The legend will reflect the map and so will only show the layers that are visible. Right now I have a scale set so that my flooding layers will only appear at specific scales. When I zoom in, they will appear in the legend. I want them to pop out a little bit more and so I'm going to use the layer effect. This strong drop down shadow makes the layers pop out and draw attention to them. We have a few more options under interactivity with express mode switched off. We can set our exp exploration and navigation options, what tools appear on the map and a lot more. Remember, it's very important to set your search configuration so that your users will easily find places that are relevant to them. I'm going to bring the Esri World Geocoder Ireland view up to the top. Under theme and layout, we have a few extra options, such as adding a logo for our organization. You can easily add the logo by uploading the image and choosing the size. And if you would like, you can include a logo link. The last feature to note is the language switcher, which has recently been introduced. You do need to provide translations for all of the content that's within your app, but the option is there if you need to. My app has successfully published and so now I can launch it. Upon launching the map, I'm greeted with my introductory window that provides information about the map as well as the data that is feeding it. I can select the don't show this again and say OK. Now we are free to explore the app. Right now, I've only got towns and cities with their population size on the map, but zooming in, I'll be able to see my flood data pop in. And my legend will reflect the changes happening within the map, only showing the layers that are present there.
The last template we're going to look at is the nearby app template. I've already created this app and so this time I want to work backwards, first exploring the, the app and its capabilities and then looking in the background and seeing how we set it up. This app opens with some information about how to use the app as well as the data that is feeding the map. I'm going to get rid of the window by clicking don't show this again and clicking close. This app is designed to allow users to find Irish heritage monuments and architecture within a certain search radius. Right now, I have the scale set from zero kilometers to five kilometers with the default sitting at a three kilometer radius. To use it, I simply search an area and the map will take me to that location and will provide me with the points of the monuments and architecture that I might be interested in nearby. Zooming out, I can see my search radius and all of the points within the area. In the panel to the left, I have my two layers and the number of points that has been found in my search area. I can expand each one to see the points. I can change my scale bar, uh, increasing the search radius or decreasing it. And I can edit the maximum search radius by simply clicking on the maximum five and increase it to the number I would like. As the user looking for monuments or locations of architectural heritage nearby, I can expand the list of either the architectural heritage or monument records and select a point. These will be in order of distance from the location. I can click on post box, click on the point and it will be highlighted on the map. I can then read more information about this point in the panel. So I won't go too into detail about the configuration options for the sections that are there for all apps, such as the map, about interactivity, theme and layout and language switcher. I do want to look at the nearby section and have a look at what options we have here. Under the search method, we want to provide the layers that will be giving results, as well as the search radius distance. So as we saw, the minimum was zero and the maximum was five. And we also allowed our user to change the minimum and maximum search distance, which can be set here. Under map results, we can change what the um, location symbol is. Right now I have a pin size and it's colored black. Uh, we do also have the option to include layer effects, which you, you've seen previously, and we can set the pop-up behavior. Under panel options, we have decided to group the results by layer, which makes it easier to see what results are appearing, as well as keeping them collapsed by default. There are some more options down here, such as adding an elevation profile or showing directions to the point, which we have not switched on. The attribute filter allows the user to select for points that have that match the filter that has been selected. This was not relevant for the app that we made, but it would be relevant, for instance, if you had a facilities map and you could uh, include filters that would filter for points that were wheelchair accessible, child friendly, dog friendly, or something similar. I hope that this video has provided enough of an overview that you will be able to bring new and interesting use cases to this application, and that you can share your work more easily with your audience. If you found this video informative, please do give it a like and subscribe to Esri Ireland to see more content from us.